Are you ready? Stretch your hands. Father, help me to help your children. Father, uh, hide my flesh behind the cross. Let there be none of me and all of you. Father, I know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Send your word this morning. Speak through me. Give me the anointing that makes teaching easy. Anoint the ears of the hearers. Open the ears of the hearers. Let them hear clearly the word of God that is able to transform their lives. Have your way in this house. Now, Holy Spirit, as the word is going out, touch, heal, deliver, set the captives free. In Jesus' name, can somebody say amen? amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The word, the name, and the blood of Jesus. The word, the name, and the blood of Jesus. There are things that are in our Bible that are more important than other things that are in the same Bible. You must learn what is key, what is to be focused on so that you don't major on the minor and minor on the major. Are you here? There are certain fundamental things that I think over time, Tari, may sit down. God bless you. That over time have been lost in our Christian walk, as because of economic problems and situations, people began to pursue more of breakthroughs than the fundamentals of our Christian walk. The basis on which we are children of the Most High God. Very, very important things. And as we approach Easter, I think it's so important just to relay these foundations again and make sure that we are standing solidly on Christ, the solid rock. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Power is released by understanding. Understanding. Whatever mysteries that are in the word of God, even if you practice them without understanding, they don't have as much power. They are not as potent as when you have understanding. Somebody say understanding. So this morning, my primary focus is to get you to understand to get you to understand. I will not go too deep on the issue of the word. Um, I will touch on it as it is part of the topic because I want you to learn to use the three. The word, the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. If you understand the power that is in the word, the power that is in the name and ultimately the power that is in the blood, you will be a Christian who cannot be defeated by the enemy. I need to hear a big amen from someone. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 3, 16, maybe let's start there. For God so loved the world. He so loved the world. What did he do? He gave. He didn't give cars. He didn't give houses. He gave his only begotten son. Say begotten. Say begotten. His only begotten son that Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And many think they understand this scripture, but most of the body of Christ does not understand this scripture. God had to give Jesus his son, his only begotten son. His son that had to come down 40 and two generations out of eternity, down into time, through the corridors of time here on earth and he had to get into a dressing room called Mary be, bur be born of a virgin Mary to redeem men that's the basis of our work with God is that right? okay so people understand that Jesus died they, they understand that Jesus was born they understand he was born through Mary some believe that he was born through a virgin and the virgin birth is very, very important. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain in my sermon. Now, when Adam, when God, I don't want to say gave birth, when he created Adam, when he created Adam, then he created Eve. And then a little while after, we find the serpent already, Lucifer. We find him there already in the garden. 
That means that he was there lurking somewhere <laughs> before the first family was even established. Isaiah then explains to us that I saw Satan fall like lightning. Revelations, John the Revelator tells us in Revelations um, how he says there was war in heaven, Revelations 12. Um, you know, that's round about verse number 7. You know, the, 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 the enemy was thrown out, devil, the devil was thrown out. You know, we overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Then if, if there's a verse there that I read that then tells us that now he is now on earth. <laughs> he was thrown out of heaven. He's now on earth. So it's your turn to deal with him, kind of. <sighs> so the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives ongoing, present continuous, the whole world. He was cast out to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, in other words, he was thrown from heaven. Now he's on earth. Now is your problem. Did you get that? Okay. So now since he's on earth and he deceives, one of the greatest deceptions that the devil has managed to accomplish in God's children is the ability to deceive you to think that you don't have to participate in your deliverance and that everything was done on the cross of Calvary and it was but you don't have to appropriate it so the body of Christ is busy claiming things that they are not activating that were done by Jesus the devil thrown out of heaven according to revelations is now on earth with his angels right C comes into the garden of Eden he meets Adam and Eve. Now watch this. Remember, Lucifer lived with God for a very long time. The one thing he understood about God, please pay attention, the one thing he understood about God is that God is a lawmaker. Say so he's a lawmaker. Right? And since he's a lawmaker, he's not a lawbreaker. And he's also a keeper of his word. He exalts his word even above his own name. Hello? Hello? So what God says he does. Now since God is a lawmaker, there is a law that God made that worked against God. Follow me. That worked against God in his creation of man. Within the context of the devil's agenda. What is that law? If you sin, the penalty is death. So when you sin, the law of death kicks in. The devil ultimately is not the one who created death. Death was there before the devil was onto the scene. Death was created by God as punishment for sin. The devil left heaven, I showed you, despised from heaven, thrown out because he wanted a power contest with God, wanted to impeach God. God says, I'm not having it. Threw him out. We find him on earth. He comes on earth. He sees there Adam and Eve in the garden. Remember, he is angry at God. So the devil being angry already after destroying the earth, God came to put order back onto the earth. Adam was there. Eve was there. The devil, remember, remember the anger. And remember him knowing God is a lawmaker. So he gets onto the scene and he understands that your God is a lawmaker and one law he made is if you sin, you must die. So the devil in his attempt to kill Adam and Eve, he could not kill them because they had the glory of God upon them. So his goal was to remove the glory. How do I remove the glory? Let's go to the law. Do not eat of this fruit that is in the midst of the garden. You may eat every other fruit. What does he do? Seduces Eve. Eat the fruit, take the fruit, eat it and give it to her, her husband. She ate, nothing happened. Her husband ate, they were naked and ashamed. It is when the man eats that the family falls apart. 
Women can do certain things and they don't affect the destiny of the family. Huge mistake of Adam allowing his wife to wander without communicating with her. Serpent will come and find her, talk to her. You'll have issues naked and ashamed. I've said a lot in a short space. Let me move on. Another mistake made by Adam is to allow the woman to go looking for provision. Why do you allow her to bring provision and give you provision? She's the helper. Her money is for makeup and other small little things. She's a helper, not the primary source. Adam made the mistake of making it the primary source, but that's not my sermon. So, so, so he could not kill Adam and he could not kill Eve because they had the glory of the Lord. How did he remove the glory? He gave them the fruit, naked and ashamed. Right? And then the Bible says, Adam, where are you? Now, God who's omniscient, all-knowing, Hello? Omnipotent, all-powerful. He knows everything. He sees everything. He's all-seeing. How can he ask, where are you? He was not asking the geographical location of Adam. He was asking the spiritual location. Where are you? You are no longer a part of my presence. Where are you? Adam, where are you? In other words, Adam was lost because he lost God. Because he ate what he was not supposed to eat. Just because something is available doesn't mean you have to eat it. Sorry, I mean sleep with it. Sorry, I mean eat it. I... They are now naked. They are now ashamed. What did they do? They try and cover up with figs. Fig leaves. They try and cover up with things from the ground. They try and cover up with vegetation. They try and cover up with something that came from the ground. And God says, no, that's not how you cover sin. For you to cover sin, there is blood required. Because you sinned, I require blood to appease me. So I'm going to show you a pattern and move with this pattern going forward. What does he do? God slays the first animal and he covers Adam and Eve with skin. Not just skin, but skin that was soaking with blood. So it's not the skin that was really covering. It is really the blood that came from the animal that was covering. So God was showing them that this is the pattern. So from hence going forward, God was showing them the pattern of covering up for sin is blood. It's blood. Fast forward, they have children, Cain and Abel. They came out as twins. Cain and Abel were born. The Lord requires offering. I mean, Genesis 4. He requires offering from Cain and Abel. So even your children, offering is required of them. Not only your offering, but their offering. So the Lord asked for offerings. And I've often wondered, Lord, why did you have a problem with Cain's offering? Because the Bible says Cain was a tiller of the ground. The ground. The ground. Hello? The ground. And, he, and uh, Abel, his brother, was a keeper of the sheep. In other words, Abel already was a type of Christ. Christ focused on sheep. Understanding that the solution to mankind's problem will come through sheep. Not through what you get from the ground, but through sheep. Sheep have got blood. So already Abel was a type of Christ. Shepherd. Shepherding sheep. Watch this. So as he was shepherding sheep, the Bible says God commanded for them to bring offerings. And like I said, I've often had a problem because, you know, the Bible says that Cain brought the, off the offering that he brought. He brought fruit from the ground. And, and I thought, but this is, this is fine because that's where he works. So, so I, I must get offerings from the things that I work. I must... Abel brought... A sheep, a lamb, to be killed. Cain brought the fruit of the ground. That's where he was working. And I've said, God, what's the problem? The problem is, though it's what you have, it's not what I require. Cain, don't do your own thing in offerings. 
So Cain brought the fruit of the ground, unaccepted. Abel brought the sheep, accepted. Accepted why? Because it has blood. Say blood. Talk to me, say blood. So already, even before Cain killed Abel, they were already in sin because they were born into sin through Adam. They came from the loins of the apple or fruit eater from the midst of the garden. So they were already in the loins. So even when you are born, you are already a sinner. Without you swearing, without you learning your first curse word, without your, before your first lie, before your first wink, before your first anything as a baby, you're already a sinner. Because of where you came from. Because the sin comes through the blood through which you were born. Our fathers have sinned. Lamentations 5 verse 7. And are no more. But we bear. In other words, there are things we are carrying. We bear their iniquities. So it is based on these iniquities that we can go to hell even without sinning. By yourself. So there are sins of the forefathers. These are called iniquities. That's why Jesus was bruised for the iniquities on the cross. You need to not only take care of your personal sins that are idiosyncratic to you, personal to you, but you need to also ask for forgiveness for the sins of the forefathers. We are taught this by Daniel when he was fighting for the prophecy to come to pass. He even spoke about the sins of the forefathers that they had to be forgiven. Then was the promise released. So Abel brought an acceptable offering. And from then going forward, there was now a pattern where every year, say every year, talk to me, say every year, every year they now had to bring offerings that were animals and not fruits and not vegetables to the temple. No vegetables were brought to the temple in terms of atonement. It had to be a bloody animal because God required blood. Why did he require blood? blood because Leviticus chapter number 17 verse number 10 to verse number 11 tells us that there is life in the blood not in the fruit in the blood not in the vegetation in the blood so what is this whole issue about because they would continue to sin continue to sin continue to sin year after year year after year they needed to appease God for their sins so they took lambs they took cows, they took chickens, they put them on the altar and these things sufficed for a year. That's why they had these annual ceremonies so that they could continue with life because they were supposed to die that year, that new year they were supposed to die, but they put another animal to die in their place and instead of their blood being spilt, the blood of those animals was spilt on their behalf so they could live for another year. So the blood of bullocks and goats and sheep and, and, and all those things only suffice to appease God for one year. So they continue to sacrifice. It's not the sacrifice that was required, it's the blood. So they continued and continued. and That's why you find in the Old Testament, they, they sacrifice these cows, they sacrifice these things, they, they bring cattle, they bring, you understand? Hello? Watch this. I want to show you a scripture. Pause. Let's go this other side. Leviticus chapter number 17 verse number 10. I want to show you why witches are powerful. Why is the occult so powerful, men of God? I'll show you why. Because they understand a mystery that many Christians do not understand. They understand that life is in the blood. So why do they still sacrifice animals? Why do they still sacrifice humans? Why do they still sacrifice blood? Why, why is such a, 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 a blood requirement? He says in verse 10, this is the Lord speaking, and Whatever man of the house of Israel or of the strangers, in other words, saved or unsaved, who dwells among you, who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and I will cut him off from among the people. Now, 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 you may read the scripture and think it's irrelevant. It's very relevant. It's not irrelevant. It's very relevant. Why? It shows me the power of the occult. They eat blood because there is life. Next verse says that there is life 
in blood. So when eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood, when they kill a baby, they have taken on the blood of that baby so that they lengthen their days. So they take the blood of a human being, they eat it, they partake of it, so that they, they become stronger. They've taken on the life of that person. They've taken on the strength of that person. And that's why a lot of them, they don't die. When they're about to die, a young child dies and they resurrect back to life because they've now taken that blood. That child has substituted the death that they were supposed to have. So that child died instead of this person. So whoever was supposed to die lives because the guilty one who is supposed to die does not die. He sacrifices an innocent one so that he, the guilty one, can live longer. So it is on this basis that witches keep getting stronger and stronger. And they eliminate one, one. Family members keep eliminating, keep eliminating. When they finish with family members, they go to outsiders because they understand that there is life in blood. Say there's life in blood. I'll prove to you that there's life in blood. If you have a gunshot just on your hand, no vital organs, you bleed. Why do you bleed? You bleed because since there's life in blood, when you are bleeding or, or when there's a cut, your whole body sends a signal to your blood, life, to rush where there's death. That's why you begin to clot. Doctor will confirm what I'm saying. You begin to clot. It becomes red even if you're bruised because your blood rushes to secure that place because life is in the blood. So when blood smells death, blood rushes with life to secure the life. But if you keep bleeding, you don't die because of the wound. You die because of the bleeding. It is called bleeding out. That's why doctors look and see, is he bleeding externally? Is he bleeding internally? After an accident, you can die of external bleeding. You can die of internal bleeding. So they rush to fix the bleeding because that's how you lose life. Watch this. So there's life in the blood. Say there's life in the blood. Talk to me. Say there's life in the blood. So for your life, Old Testament, to continue, there had to be substitution. They took a cow and they substituted it for Julie. Julie was supposed to die because of sins of the forefathers and her allocation of sins for that year. I know there are other people who do more than their own allocation, but let's leave that one alone. But, but because of your allocation of sins that you sinned for that year, blood was used to cover up, to appease. Not to appease the devil, to appease God. Because God is the one who was angry at you. He was the lawmaker. So it is the lawmaker that must be appeased. That's why in a case in, in court, they say the state of Zimbabwe versus. Hello? So it is the lawmaker that has to be appeased. So it is God who has to be appeased. So these things were offered as sacrifices, not unto the man of God, but unto God, so that God could be appeased, so that they could keep living. Have I explained that well? So the problem with this old system is that it took year after year, every year you had to keep sacrificing. There's life in the blood. The blood of anything, there's life. The blood of animals, there's life. It's enough for one year for you. But there is life. There is life. Say there's life in the blood. Talk to me. Say there's life in the blood. One of the most dangerous diseases is cancer of the blood. Leukemia, I think they call it. It is when the blood has cancer. If an organ has cancer, the blood can heal and rush towards that organ and heal that organ. But what about when the blood when that blood is contaminated, when it has cancer, they have to draw all of the blood out and put 
fresh blood. They call it a blood transfusion. The problem humanity has is that the blood that we carry is blood from our forefathers, which is contaminated. This is why we take communion, so that we are now doing a blood transfusion where we exit our blood and we take on the blood of Jesus. The spotless blood. The spotless blood. So, 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 so God looking in eternity, I'm just talking this morning. God looking in eternity so that, no, this thing of sacrificing cows and bullocks and chickens and whatnot and goats every year is not sustainable. So he had a solution. It wasn't a new solution. <laughs> it was an old solution. Which once in a while, you would see that solution appearing in shadows and types in the Old Testament. Sometimes it would appear as a man called Abel who, 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 who <laughs> his blood was spilt by his brother and the blood of Abel went into the ground and that blood of Abel began to speak against the one who killed him. Blood knows who spilt it. So the blood of Abel knew that it is Cain who spilled the blood. So though when God came to, uh, uh, to Cain and said, where is your brother? Uh, where is he? He says, am I my brother's keeper? He says, no, Cain, don't lie to me. There is a voice. And that voice, I can hear it on my divine frequency. It is the voice of the blood. The voice of the blood, blood of your brother that is speaking and not just speaking, but crying out against you to me. What is that blood crying? It's saying, Cain killed me. So he's looking for vengeance. So we see how Christ was there in the form of, or, or rather, uh, 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 Abel was a form of Christ. And, and then he came unto his own, his brother, he, he, he received him not. His brother called him out into the field and he killed him in his field. It's relevant that he killed him in his field. Just like Christ was called out of heaven to come onto earth, which was the devil's field. Uh, so that he could deal with Christ in his field like Cain dealt with Abel on his field. And so he called him and he said, come to my home ground. I have home ground advantage, Abel. And he slew him. He knew where all the weapons were because it was his field. Just like the devil knew how to destroy Christ in his field. That's why you must never play with the devil in his field. Don't sit, sit and hang around in the flesh. You will lose that battle because you are dealing with the devil in his territory. Just like Jesus came and he had to lose that battle on earth because it was the devil's field. And, and and, 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 and so the first type of Christ, we see it in the man called Abel. And then later on again, we see it in the man called Joseph. When, when, when you are a type of Christ, you, you, your own just cannot receive you. You are a good thing, but you are perceived as a bad thing. Because uh, you see, Joseph was a dreamer. Just like Christ had a dream to redeem man. Joseph had a dream to redeem his whole mankind. In the time when there was going to be a famine, he was going to be the solution. Don't think that just because you are the solution, you are going to be received by your brethren. Oh, I wish somebody was in church. Oh, can I have a little church up in here? Just because he was the solution, doesn't mean he was received. So the Bible says his brothers uh, did not receive him as the person who shall be on top. Uh, that's why they hated him because he, of his dream. Uh, this is the same way in which Christ came unto his own and his own received him not. Uh, and the Bible says, I'm uh, back to Joseph, uh, that Joseph was sold uh, by his brothers uh, for 30 pieces, for 20 pieces of silver. In the same way Christ uh, was sold by Judas uh, for 30 pieces of silver. So it is shadows uh, and types. Uh, a type of Christ uh, uh, showed up in Abel. Another type of Christ uh, showed up in Joseph uh, again uh, both of these were redeemers uh, both of these were shepherds uh, both of these were people that were willing to look out not only for themselves so, so, so shadows in time so we begin to see that God already was showing us pictures of his plan of redemption and, 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 and Joseph's brothers huh, they, 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 they wanted to kill Joseph, but they couldn't kill him. They wanted to kill him because of his coat of many colors, but they couldn't kill him. So they had to take 
something to die for him. Kill it. Put his blood on that coat and say we killed him. Again, it means that that lamb died on behalf of Joseph. It died in his place. Already God was showing us how he was going to solve the sin problem. A permanent solution. It had to be blood. Many of us as saints, we don't understand that there is ultimate solutions that are in the blood. Oh, thank God for the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him and without him was nothing made that was made in him was the light of men. That light shone in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. The Bible says that all things were made through him, for him and by him. He's talking about Jesus, the word. When you talk of creation, you talk about the word. The word is Jesus. The Bible says that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. The word of God is the sword so you can take the sword and cut off the head of the enemy using the word of God because the word is powerful the Bible says the word is a hammer so many times we try to do our deliverance taking the hammer of the word we hammer a witch but the problem is another one was born in the house of witches so still another one is gonna come thank God for the word but why is it that 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 that, that the problem still keep coming despite So I can talk about the word and I have talked about the word and I can also talk about the name because the name, I, I must talk about it, it's in the title so somebody will look for it. So, 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 so just allow me this little addendum. Let me talk about it. There is power in the name of Jesus. Somebody say there's power in the name. Talk to me. Say there's power in the name. Uh, it's called the precious name of Jesus. Uh, there is power in that name. Uh, the Bible says that at the mention uh, of that name, uh, every knee in heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth shall bow. So it doesn't matter where they take the witchcraft from. They can take it from the heavens. They can take it from the earth. They can take it from under the earth. At the mention of that name, uh, herbs must bow. Even if they use animals, animals must bow. So when I'm in trouble, uh, I call on Jesus. Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. The other day the disciples, they were stopped from preaching the name Acts 4.18. Preaching in the name of Jesus. Because they saw that anytime they mentioned this name, something would happen. Anytime they mentioned this name, Jesus would show up. So at the name of Jesus, witchcraft altars must be destroyed. At the name of Jesus, spirit husbands must be destroyed. At the name of Jesus, you in Find solutions. So you need to do a study, a deep study in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. It's not the name of Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S, that really is the issue. I've been talking about this. It is the authority of the office. Jesus was the holder of the office. But the actual office is not Jesus. Because there are Mexicans called Jesus. Soccer players called J-E-S-U-S. -S. People don't bow at the mention of that Mexican. No. They bow at the name of Jesus. Which Jesus? The Jesus Christ who is Lord. So the real office is Lord. Not J-E-S-U-S. -S. You can call your child J-E-S-U-S. Put it on the birth certificate, it means nothing, but it is at the understanding of the Lordship. The Lordship of Jesus. Understanding that people bow down to Lord. So when you call on Jesus, you are calling on him as Lord. Not just at the mention of his name, but at the understanding of the office of Jesus. Shout Jesus. Oh, come on, shout it with understanding. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. The Bible says that there is no other name under which you shall be saved. So it is only at the name of Jesus that you shall be saved. Not the name of Papa, not the name of Prophet, but the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! There is Mohammed. His name holds some level of power in those communities. Uh, there is uh, all those other Buddha and all those other guys. Their names hold a certain level of power. But there is one name. 
which is above all those names and in this season it is the name that we celebrate it is the name of Jesus that precious son of God who has given for us to redeem us by God to buy us back up at loose forces where you are bought back where you are paid for by Jesus where now instead of you dying he dies in your place it is a principle called substitution where because of your sins you were supposed to die but jesus says hang on i'm gonna substitute you you come out of the playing ground because if this match ends like this you're supposed to die so i'm substituting you and i'm gonna come there with the jersey number 22 it's not even on the list hallelujah and i'm gonna die in your place so whenever you are in trouble don't call on that counselor don't call on that member of parliament you got to call on Jesus oh can I talk about Jesus somebody shout Jesus oh say it again say Jesus at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus every witch shall bow in the name of Jesus every disease shall bow in the name of Jesus problems have got to bow can I talk a little bit about the name of Jesus the Bible says the name of the Lord not the name of Jesus the name of the Lord is a strong tower hallelujah the righteous run to it and they are saved it is this revelation of Jesus that gave David an advantage over his contemporaries because he understood the power of the name the name not the name of Jesus per se but the name of the Lord and remember Jesus is Lord that means David had an advantage because he knew how to go ahead of time fetch revelations of the Christ ahead of time and begin to bring them back into the Old Testament even before Jesus was born that's why when he showed up there and he began to fight Goliath what is it that David had that all the other people did not have he had an understanding of the name of Jesus he said to Goliath you come to me with sword and spear but I come to you in the name of the Lord whatever you are facing child of God you gotta use that name I know you like to name drop I know you like to tell us about your surname but I have a name that is above every president that is above every papa that is above every prophet and that name is the name of Jesus it's a name that holds and reels power here on earth it is the name of Jesus it is the name of Jesus that commands power even in heaven angels bow to that name on earth men bow kings bow and even in hell you don't hear me that's why Jesus had to die and go to hell he was going to stamp his authority over hell and when he went to hell he took the keys to death hell and the grave from Lucifer and he says behold all power and authority is now in my hands so when you call on Jesus you have the keys to the kingdom when you call on Jesus you are calling on the solution provider somebody shout Jesus when you're in trouble shout Jesus blind but Timaeus a son of Timaeus he was in trouble he was blind for a long time but he just called on he said son of David have mercy on me in other words at the mention of that name you invoke the mercies of God somebody shout Jesus said whatever you ask the father in my name he will do it don't ask it in your name for your name is tainted your name has got a lot of issues in it your name has iniquities in it I know you think you have a good name I know you want to keep your name but there is a blameless name so when I write my petition unto God when I bring forth my issues unto God what am I doing I then have to sign that letter because my prayer is a letter when someone is reading a letter they don't start by reading the letter they start by reading who signed it so whenever I pray at the end of that prayer I must say in the name of 
because if they answer according to my name they will start writing issues they will start writing in this family there's this issue in this family they killed someone in this family because they are reading my name don't ever sign a prayer of in your name you gotta sign it in the name of because the name of the Lord is a powerful name there is healing in that name there's deliverance in that name there's a freedom in that name the captives are set free in that name sometimes you don't even know all the scriptures but you just gotta holler like blind Bartimaeus he didn't call a scripture he just called the name sometimes you're about to have an accident and all you do is shout just shout that name that wonderful name that name which has authority the bible says the disciples they were shocked they were shocked in luke 10 verse 17 they said master even the demons are subject to us in your name we know we have no power of our own all we did is go out and we did deliverance in your name the name of somebody shout it again shout demons have to obey when you shout in the name of Jesus I said cancer has to obey when you call on the name of Jesus so 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 I I could have I could have talked about the name of Jesus today and and had a whole service about the name of Jesus why why the name of Jesus it is the name that sends shivers down the spine of the devil because when you call the name of Jesus he remembers what Jesus did to him he remembers that he defeated the first Adam but he remembers not the second Adam but the last Adam there will be no other Adam after Jesus because Jason dear Anais uh, he is the ultimate solution there is no other solution beyond Jesus so when you call on Jesus you are calling on the ultimate solution provider shout the name Jesus or oh, talk to me shout the name Jesus shout that wonderful name Jesus so, so I could have had a whole service about Jesus but 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 please be seated because I keep getting drawn to the blood I'm, I'm being drawn to the blood <laughs> the name Jesus I have called on the name Jesus and done deliverance on people and the demons went because they heard the name they fled. They ran away because they heard the name. But after a month, I saw that when I laid hands on the same person, the demons came back. And I said, what, 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 what gave them the audacity, the, the, the resolve to come back? I thought I mentioned the name Jesus. I mention it again and they flee. But after a while, I, I, I seem to see them coming back again. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what is the problem? And he drew me to the blood. And he began to explain to me about the legalities of the spiritual system. There are spiritual legalities and technicalities and, 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 and when you study your Bible you will see that, that, that your Bible is a legal book. This book of the law. Joshua 1.8 This book of the law. So there are laws that are at play. So when you use the word you can flush out those situations or drive out those powers. When you use the name, you can also drive out these issues. But the reason why they keep coming back, watch this, is because you have not dealt with the issues from the legal dynamics of the spirit. 
And the Lord said to me, the ultimate solution when you are dealing with issues of curses, iniquities, all these covenants, the ultimate solution is the blood. The Bible talks about the sword. Assume that this is a sword. And assume that this is a tree. I can cut off the tree. It falls. Hello? And ultimately, the tree falls. It withers and dies. But there's something that is still in the earth and again the tree will grow again like some problems in your life you've applied the word but they keep growing again and you say where is this thing coming from again I thought I cut it off you cut it off but you didn't uproot it so the word can cut things off but they can still grow again. And then the name of Jesus is the name that gets to the roots. So you can use the name of Jesus, back to our tree example, to uproot. <laughs> there are problems that have been there for a long time in your life that at the name of Jesus we are promoting them today in the name of Jesus we are not just cutting off we are uprooting witchcraft we uproot that which your father did not plant Matthew 15 13 we uproot it and we use the name of Jesus I've studied a little bit of agriculture to know that sometimes you can uproot. And then from the same place, after a few years, what is this small tree here? And you look at the leaves, you look at the fruit, you say, it's the same tree that I uprooted is it back it's back because when you uprooted watch this there were still seeds of the same tree in the ground so if you are clever and you want a permanent solution you go and you to 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 pest control agricura and you say i have a tree i need it keeps coming back i, I want to talk to somebody who's got issues that keep coming back and is looking for an ultimate solution because i'm reminded of what i said in the beginning that they would sin put blocks but the sin kept coming back after another year they put another lamp and the sin kept, keeps coming back it is because what they were using was tainted what they were using was not perfect there is power or there is life in the blood of anything but it depends what that thing is is what determines how much power there is. If it is the blood of a bullock, you can add another year to your life. But the problems keep coming back. They keep coming back. Just like this tree. It's back again. I thought the cancer was gone. They say it's back again. I uprooted 
did it, but it's growing again. So because you go to Agricura, you now uproot the tree again, and then you dig it up, and then you take your chemicals, which are equivalent to the blood of Jesus, and you say, I'm going to kill any kind of seed that is in the ground. There are problems that you have killed in your life, but the seed is still in the ground. So what we take now as an ultimate solution, just like what God did as an ultimate solution, is to take the blood of Jesus and apply it on the situation. Whatever health problems you are facing, You need to make sure that if they keep recurring, call on the everlasting blood. Call on that powerful blood and say, Lord, the word, I've applied it, but it came back. The name of Jesus, I applied it, but it came back. But there is a solution to which the devil has got absolutely no answer. And that solution is the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus has power to go into my background. The blood of Jesus has power to neutralize curses. The blood of Jesus. Why, why, why does the blood of Jesus have this power? Because the blood of Jesus, watch this, is the legal redemption system. It is the system by which we are redeemed. We are not redeemed by the name. We are redeemed by the blood. The blood has got purchasing power in the realm of the spirit. Most problems in your life are because of the sins of the forefathers. Most problems are because of iniquities. And because of those iniquities and the sins that the forefathers performed, it is because of that that there is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. That's why when your family members they go to the occult, they are told that there are things that need to be sorted out. There are things that need to be paid in the realm of the spirit that's why they keep doing rituals so they can pay off but those things keep coming again so they have to keep doing rituals and have to keep doing rituals because the payment is not enough but there is something that needs to be paid for when you sin you have to pay with your life so what did Jesus do Jesus then went on the cross as he was the lamb of God they were using other lambs before but John said behold the lamb of God I don't hear me behold the lamb of god uh, take it away not the sins of my church but the sins of the whole world the blood of jesus has enough power enough purchasing power enough buying power to pay for every sin of the people who you know they died of the people who you know are living and the people who you have not even been born the blood of Jesus is so powerful that it is what God used not to pay the devil but to pay himself because of the sins of our forefathers we were supposed to die Jesus came as a substitute and said you were supposed to pay with your life so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna fish you out of this soccer field and i'm gonna step in and finish off this match for you and i know at the end death will be required so i'm gonna die in your place that's why he had to die you must be happy that he died don't watch passion of the christ and cry when jesus died that's what the bible says in isaiah 53 verse number 10 it pleased the father to bruise him why did it please the father to bruise Jesus because he realized that no it was supposed to be Oswald who was supposed to be beaten for all these sins even if he thinks he's a good boy his great 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 grandfather was not a good boy so he is guilty by genes so still even though it was not him personally who did it he was still going to have to die be whipped and be punished like Jesus was punished Oswald was gonna be punished because he was still guilty by association so it proves the father it proves the father it, it pleased the father to bruise him the Roman soldiers were working for God that's why when the disciples said 
Master, you're not going to die. They said, no. You are talking for the devil. You are advocating for the devil. You don't want me to die because you don't know that this is the master plan. Within this plan, man sinned. Remember, we're back in the Garden of Eden. Man sinned. Punishment was supposed to be death. Adam was supposed to die. To prove to you that death had already set in, the first two children that were born, one killed the other one, to show you that already death was in them. So God had a plan. You see, Julie, let me teach you this. God is not reactive. God doesn't sit in heaven looking at and saying, okay, this is what the devil is going to do and then I'm going to do that. No. God has solutions before the devil does his thing already. So he knew ahead of time that Adam and Eve were going to take that fruit. He knew it. So, even before Jesus was born in Mary's womb, he had already been crucified ahead of time. <laughs> this is the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the earth. So God, you knew already. Yes, I knew. The solutions to your tomorrow problems, you have them already. It's not like tomorrow Jesus has to die, then bleed, then you take his blood, then use it. No, the blood is already. All you need to do is plug into the solution. Plug into the solution. Proverbs 26.2 A curse without cause shall not stick. Why is the curse sticking? Because the cause is still there. Why is the cause still there? Because you have not understood that the cause can be taken care of by the blood of Jesus. My people perish, not because of the power of sin, but because of lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of what Jesus did. So all you do as a child of God is you settle down, study about the blood. Study about the blood. I'm telling you a secret. Study about the blood and begin to fight your battles from the platform of the blood with understanding. Not just to shout the blood, the blood. I'll show you that just shouting something you don't understand doesn't have power. Because the sons of Sceva, they were dealt with by the devil. Because they said, in the name of the Jesus, whom Paul preaches, they called, they called on the name of Jesus, but they were defeated. Because they were speaking something that they had no understanding. That's why every time I want to preach, I'm slowing down. Because I want you to understand the power that is in the name of Jesus. The power that is in the word of God. The power that is in the blood of Jesus. It is by understanding it. The devil hates what you are hearing. That, oh, Adam sinned. And he, death entered through his sin. And I am in Adam. And so Jesus came so that he could take my place because I was supposed to die. I was, he even went to hell on your behalf. He had to go to hell. If he didn't go, you were still supposed to go. Say substitution. That law of substitution which is in the Bible is very, very important. Everything you see in passion of the Christ that was happening to Jesus, you better thank God that it happened to Jesus because that was supposed to be you. So when you do not receive Jesus into your heart, God God cannot understand. He's saying, what? what? He said, oh, so you want to die? You want to be whipped? You want... <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody? Say, thank you, Jesus. You see, today your thank you, Jesus, carries some weight. Because you understand that that was supposed to be you. What was done by the Roman soldiers with a cat of nine tails. Do you know what they used to whip him? It was called a cat of nine tails. It was a special whip. It wasn't just a normal whip. It was a whip that had iron and metal and glass at the end. That when they, when they whipped Jesus, it wasn't just like, whip -pa, whip -pa. no, it was, whip. 
Then it stuck on him and wah, and they pulled out his flesh. Why did they have to pull out his flesh? They had to pull out his flesh so that Jesus could bleed. Jesus could not die by suffocation. He could not be choked. He could not be run over by a kettle. He could not die any other way. He needed to bleed out. Because the solution to mankind's problems was in his blood. I know you wish he died a more, a better death as it were, a more majestic death, but it had to be brutal. Calvary had to be brutal. He had to be beaten. They needed to be 39 stripes, not 37, not 28. They had to be 39 because there are 39 types of diseases. So there had to be 39 stripes for it is by those stripes that you were healed. Every disease had to be covered. If there were 37, COVID would not have been covered. You are not hearing me. If there were 32, leukemia could not be covered. Every type of disease falls within 39 classes. As doctors, they'll tell you. So he had to have 39 stripes on him. I know after the seventh stripe, you are feeling sorry for him. But God said, keep on weeping. Keep on weeping. You have not covered the full quota of diseases. There's still this left. There's still that left. HIV is not yet covered. Romans soldiers what are you waiting for whip him uh, and they would whip him again uh, then they covered uh, hiv and they whipped him again uh, then they covered blood diseases uh, then they whipped him again uh, then they covered the cancer of the womb uh, and they whipped him again uh, they covered blindness uh, they whipped him again uh, they covered deaf ears uh, they whipped him again uh, they whipped him again every whip uh, represented a disease uh, so every time they whipped uh, the father said yes this one is covered uh, he was ticking off his list uh, yes this one is covered uh, they whip him again he ticks off they whip him again, he takes off uh, until there were 39 stripes uh, and he said it's enough uh, because all the diseases were covered. Uh, they, they, had to, they had to put a crown of thorn on his head. A crown of thorns representing curses. Curses are placed on your head. If the crown of thorns was not on his head, your cases that you're operating under would still not have any legal rights to go. But because cases were placed, thorns talk of cases, cases were put on Jesus so that the cases on you might be removed. Say thank you, Jesus. Oh, say thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Jesus was paid as a ransom for you. That's why Jesus came so that you could be set free. Jesus was the full payment. In fact, Jesus was over payment. When I say, when I say payment, sometimes people don't understand. Let me, maybe, let me, Titi, come, come, let me show you this visual. Come, come up, come up, come up. Watch this. Tinashe here is the sinner. Pastor Mike, come. Pastor Mike is the devil. Pastor Mike is the devil. Now, now, uh, who can I use here? Who can I use here? Men of God, please, do you mind, sir? Please come, come behind right there. This, this is a man of God. Clap hands for the man of God. Hallelujah. This is an apostle of God. Now, he represents God here. Amen? I represent Jesus. Are you listening to me? Tinashe is the sinner. This is the devil. The devil is called the what? Accuser of the brethren. He doesn't accuse the brethren to the brethren. No. He accuses the brethren to God. So, basically, he has a discussion. Point to her, but talk to him. You see that picture? That is happening every single day. Now, he has a list of what? Of sins. The accuser always has information. Now, you point to her, show, showing him so the devil is accusing you to God. Are you listening to me? Now, this one is supposed to be killed based on that. And the devil knowing that God is a keeper of his law, he will go to the same God that put the law and said, you said, you said, according to the law, you said, if they do this, that's on the paper, they must die. And God has to agree, despite the fact that he loves you. That's why he says in Ezekiel, I sought for a man among them. 
to stand in the gap that I would not destroy them. God did not want them destroyed. So he looked for a man to pray. God until now is still looking for an intercessor amongst humanity, but he could not find one. So he raised another intercessor. He raised a lawyer who is always on duty, who never goes out of the country. And that lawyer is Jesus. The Bible calls him an advocate because there is a court of law. You need an advocate. So when you are refusing Jesus, you are refusing the lawyer. Not only is he the lawyer, Jesus is also the Lamb of God that was slain. He died for you and he bled for you to pay off. But if you are a child of God, keep accusing, and the devil is accusing to God, and you are ignorant of what Jesus did, you ultimately will die based on ignorance of your rights. So what do you do? Hang around Jesus. I am Jesus. Hang around Jesus and say, Jesus, teach me what you did for me on Calvary. Teach me the ways of the El Elyon. Teach me about redemption. Teach me about the blood. Teach me about your name. Teach me about your authority. Teach me about the Holy Ghost. So when you hang around Jesus, you are learning about what Jesus did. You are the church. You are now the bride of Christ. Is it not uh, the, the bridegroom Christ who pays the dowry for the bride on Calvary? Uh, you don't hear me. Christ paid the dowry for the church. All you need to do is to say, I do, I do, I do receive you, Jesus. You pay the dowry, so I do receive you. That's what church is all about. It's about teaching you about Christ. Christ teaching you, using the man of God. He's teaching you. He's also teaching you about God. He's saying, though God is a judge, he also is a God of mercy. Uh, he's a God of justice. And he's right. The devil is right. He's not lying. You're actually supposed to die. But there's something that you don't know. That I died So what you do now is you take this letter here <laughs> and you say, Jesus, I've seen in your law, you represent me. So now when the devil is accusing you, here's where substitution takes place. Jesus says, no, you, you are my bride. You receive me. You said I do take you, Jesus, so you can get out of the way. So the devil is claiming, claim for payment. He's claiming for payment. And then Jesus comes on the scene and he says, the payment that you require, I paid it already to my father. This is my father. I paid already. Don't deal with this one now. Deal with me. So when she prays about her sin, she says, in the name of Jesus and Jesus steps onto the scene and he says no where there was supposed to be to be punishment God remember mercy the devil says in their family they did this wrong they did that wrong and I say yes you are right but remember I was bruised look at the bruise here I was bruised for these iniquities full payment and then the devil put sickness on you and I say no 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 this one cannot be sick look at my back by my stripes they were healed so the healing is taking place because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary oh say thank you Jesus say thank you Jesus oh say thank you Jesus there's nothing uh, that you have done uh, or will ever do that uh, Jesus did not take care of. Uh, but the problem is your ignorance. You look at this picture. He died for you. He shielded you from death. It's not... Uh, look at this. Hold this. Hold this. It's not even... It's not even... This is God. God, because of what was accused, was supposed to slay. Just lift up the axe. Was supposed to slay this one according to that law but what happened god the father said no i don't want to do that i'm gonna take one to 
die for all. I'm going to slay one for all. Through one man, Adam, all have sinned. But through another man called Jesus, all have been redeemed. So instead of just dying for, instead of punishing this one, I'm going to say, let's, 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 let's put you on, on the side. So now, God knew that the devil was so excited about killing Jesus, he took advantage of the hatred of God and of Jesus, of the devil, and he knew that if he allowed it to play out, that's why he said to Judas, Judas, do what you do quickly, my friend. Judas had to sell Jesus out. And when Judas came to himself, he killed himself. He couldn't believe what he had done. He was just part of the master plan of God on the chessboard of life. God put Judas there because he knew he was greedy for money. So God used the greed of Judas on the chessboard of life. He knew he would sell Jesus for some money. Jesus had to be sold so that he could be crucified, so that he could bleed out so that the blood of Jesus uh, spilled by the devil hallelujah could go into the ground uh, and the blood of Jesus uh, like the blood of Abel uh, which went into the ground uh, and when it went into the ground uh, God said the blood of Abel Cain uh, is crying out unto me from the ground uh, now you shall no longer be effective uh, the ground in which you are working uh, will work against you in the same way uh, God was saying to do to the devil you didn't understand the master plan the plan was for you to to strip him naked and to begin to whip him until he bled out every time he bled the blood went into the ground the ground is where you get your power cane so the ground that you are using is no longer gonna work for you so things you were you able to do before because the blood is in the ground now you can't do them anymore so now the blood of Jesus is speaking for you it is speaking for you it is blaming the devil so whenever the devil is doing things to you just call on the blood of Jesus that was spilled like the blood of Abel and say that blood must speak against you must speak against curses that blood must speak against witchcraft that blood of Jesus must speak against even my sins every accusation made by the devil is covered is covered by the blood say it's under the blood say it's under the blood say it's under the blood say my sins they are covered by the blood they are washed away the sins of the forefathers Others, they are washed away. Thank God for the blood. Apply the blood with this understanding. Apply the blood that the full price was paid. A full price of redemption. You were supposed to die, but Jesus died for you. His blood is a powerful blood. There is no curse that cannot be taken care of by the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. There is healing in the blood. There is freedom in the blood. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the name of Jesus. But ultimately, thank God for the blood. The blood is the game changer. The blood is the legal system where payment was made. Payment was made. It's called atonement. Payment was made by the blood. Say, Lord. Lord, thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Why was the blood of Jesus so powerful? It is because it was God's blood. You see, come, come today. This is my biological child, and this is my wife. For this child to be born, I had to take my blood biologically, don't make me explain, and deposit my blood into her womb. Then she was born. So if she has a blood complication, they can take my blood and help her to heal. Am I right? They cannot take the blood of the mother biologically the blood belongs to the father if you take her blood and my blood is the same blood type am i right this is why mary had to be a virgin and could not sleep with joseph because if she slept with joseph 
it would have meant that she was not pregnant with God's child. She, Mary, would have been pregnant with Joseph's child. And Joseph's child could not redeem any mankind because already there were issues in the background of Joseph. It was a tainted blood. That's why we were redeemed with the precious blood. How did it happen? The Holy Ghost had to come upon Mary. Joseph could not come upon Mary. It had to be the Holy Ghost. Mary, how shall this thing be? Since I have not slept with Joseph. And the Bible says in Luke 1, the Holy Ghost shall come upon Mary. And Mary shall conceive a child. And he shall be a holy child. And the name of the child shall be called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. So that now, when Jesus' blood was redeeming men, it was a perfect blood. So God needed his own blood without spot, without blemish to redeem men. That's why Mary had to be pregnant by Jesus. So when you refuse the virgin birth, you are refusing the pure blood. You are refusing redemption because redemption is all about pure blood. If they are to, to do a blood transfusion from my daughter, from, from, from me to my daughter, they first have to check out my blood. They can't just take it because I'm a father. Because if there is cancer in my blood and they do a blood transfusion on her, they will put cancer in her because the disease is in the blood. Just like life is in the blood, death is also in the blood. When you are sick, they take a blood test. When they test the blood, they see what's in the Am I right? Am I right? Do you know every vital organ in your body services the blood? Your heart pumps blood. Your liver cleans blood. They are all servicing. Your skin covers. Shout the blood. Talk to me, say the blood. So there's life in the blood. So to redeem you or to pay for you, God needed a perfect blood. He looked around on earth for untainted blood. He looked at the best characters. He saw that they were good. He couldn't even take a chance with Abraham because he was a liar. Isaac, same lie. Jacob would not even talk about. Reuben defiled his father's bed. He says, no. Jesus was the son of David. Only by lineage. Not by blood. On blood, God could not take a chance. It had to be his blood. That's why when Jesus resurrected, the transaction was incomplete. His mother Mary came to try and hug him. She said, don't, 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 don't touch me. Please don't touch me. The transaction is not yet completed. I still have to go up to heaven with this blood, this precious blood, and I have to put it on the seat of atonement. It's in your Bible. When I put it on the seat of atonement, then it is transaction complete. When the blood is accepted, then the Holy Ghost is released. So tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. So Pentecost cannot be before the cross. That's why you can't receive the Holy Ghost before you receive Jesus. Receive the sacrifice of the blood first. Then we can give you the Holy Ghost. That's why power without salvation is not of God. Oh, talk to me, say the blood. So that blood had to be absolutely perfect.
Let me give you this example in our close. If you are in a house and the house is on a mortgage payment, are you here? It's on a mortgage payment. You pay monthly, am I right? And as you are paying monthly, interest keeps accruing and accruing. It's a lifetime of payment. 25 years. That's a whole lifetime. But if somebody comes and wires money to your banker, just says to the banker, give me the settlement balance. And they say he bought the house for 2 million. But right now with interest it's on 3.5 million. And he wires 3.5 million as a settlement balance. Is the house paid for? Yes. Watch this. But if you do not know that someone paid, you keep paying for 25 years. The devil has made you to keep paying for years and years and years. All you needed to do was to go to the bank and present a receipt. Say, why am I paying? As far as this document is called here, Jesus paid everything. Why am I sick? Jesus was stricken on the cross and by his stripes I was healed. Why am I sick today? So you must approach spiritual problems from the platform of knowing that it was settled already. That's the starting point. This debt was paid. So you, your first question is why are you here demons? We are here because your grandfather killed so, such and such a person and because of this and then you say but the Bible says Jesus blood paid for all those sins. So why am I here? Why? I, what are you doing in me? So in other words, this is how, the basis on which I do deliverance. I do it on the basis of the cross. Of the finished work of the cross. That's the starting point. The finished work of the cross. So because this Jesus, he died for them. He was bruised for their iniquities. He was chastised for their peace. And by the stripes of Jesus, these people were healed. So I look at sickness and I say, what are you doing here? This person was healed over 2,000 years ago. This issue was settled on Calvary already. I look at death from that platform of Jesus already died for this person. So they're not supposed to die. Are you getting it? Deliverance on any other platform that is not based on the blood of Jesus is temporary. So ask the foul spirit that keeps coming back. Why do you keep coming back when Jesus settled this debt already? I have given you 